Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be be a priority, not an option. In other words, don't play fucking set, second fiddle to anybody. I got four emails I'm going to go through with you today. But before we get into the first one, I got a quote that I wrote in this topic I want to share with you. And it says, if you love yourself, value yourself, respect yourself, and see yourself as a catch, you will make, never make a lover or potential lover a priority in your life when you are only an option in theirs. It is demeaning and disrespectful to yourself to tolerate not being valued by another. Always look at what people do as a true indicator of how they really feel about you instead of accepting their words or flowery language at face value. You deserve to be treasured and appreciated for the gift that you are, but you must act in ways that demonstrate this and walk away from situations and people who do not treat you with the respect, appreciation, and love that you deserve. So let's go ahead and jump into the first email. And this one is from a woman. She says, hey, Corey. So I was reading some of your articles and I know that if a guy did the things you talk about, it would work on me. But I have a question for you. I have a guy who I am in love with and have been for about two years. He knows how I feel and has shared that he feels the same way. I thought that it would be it and we would be together. But he has a girlfriend and he has had one the entire time. I know he isn't happy because he always complains about her. Guys and women in these situations for that matter always do the same thing. They bitch and they complain. I'm going to leave her. I'm going to leave him. And yet they never do. This is part of their little fucking act to give you a little bit of hope to kind of dangle the carrot in front of you. Just wait a little longer and I'll be out of that relationship and then we can really be together. Bull fucking Shiite. And tells me how much he wants to be with me. At the end of the day, what do his actions show you? You're just his mistress. That's the bottom line. He's with his girlfriend. She continues on, but he still hasn't left her. I feel like he may be afraid to step into the unfamiliar territory. Plus, now she is either pregnant or saying that she is. I don't know if I can let him go, out, go, but everyone I talk to says he is a jerk and I need to move on. Do you have any good advice for me, even if it's what I don't want to hear? Well, really, all you have to look at are his actions. I'm sure he cares about you, but at the end of the day, if he really wanted to be exclusively with you, he would be with you. But he's a liar and he's a cheater. This is not the kind of person that you can have a monogamous relationship with. This is not the kind of person you can marry and think he's only going to be with you. Why? Look at what he's doing. He's lying to his present girlfriend and he's lying to you. I wouldn't trust this fucker as far as I could throw him and that is the bottom fucking line. And so what I would do if I were you and I know it's not what you want to hear but it's the reality. I'd say I love you. You're a great guy but I want somebody who's single, who's available and who can give me what I want. And it's obvious after all these years we've been together that you're just incapable of that. And you, all you've been doing is giving me one Kentucky guarantee after another. And bottom line is you're still with her. Now you're saying that she's pregnant. So I'm going to remove myself from the situation. I wish you the best of luck but I'm going to move on my life so I can find a man who comes from a place of honor and integrity and he will do the right thing. And when he says he's going to do something, he will do it. You on the other hand, I wouldn't trust you as far as I can throw you. I have a great – you're a great guy. We've had great sex but it's time for me to move on and I wish you all the best. Please don't contact me again that's what you need to do because bottom line he ain't gonna leave her and he'll give you the impression oh just give me another couple months no he's had two years he's had two years of your life that you can't get back and the longer you stay with this guy the longer it's going to take for you to find somebody who can be what you really want at the he's keeping you from the kind of relationship that you really deserve to be in 
But you have to love yourself. You got to stand up for yourself and say enough of this fucking bullshit and walk and never look back. You deserve it. But no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. And by you sticking around and putting up with this bullshit, you are enabling his behavior. Actions speak louder than words. And like I said, this guy is great for having a, a sex playmate type of relationship or a fuck buddy or a friends with benefits. He's not relationship material because he's a fucking liar. That's the bottom line. Think about it. This is if you if he just say he does leave her. And he pretends that he's in a relationship with you. This is exactly – he's going to eventually find somebody else that he can have as a girlfriend on the side. That's just – he's a pathetic, weak bitch and that's just the way it is. So let's move on to the second email. This one's from a guy. He says, hey man, I'm currently trying to reattract my ex-girlfriend that lives out of town that I have not seen in months and I desperately need your help. I used to chase her until I read your book and I decided to stop contacting her and let her come to me. She is currently seeing someone and so am I but we both still have feelings for each other. I think you're bullshitting yourself a little bit there, dude because bottom line is you ain't together. I know you're only supposed to use the phone to set dates but after her flaky behavior, in other words, you made dates and she fucking blew you off. And oh, but I still care about you. Oh, you're so important. We'll always be in each other's lives. The bottom line is she's just trying to keep you in the background as an option in case things don't work out with her new boyfriend. And so listen to what he says next. He says, I do not plan on asking her for a date until she brings it up. That's good. He says, do you think I am playing this correctly? Yes. Walk and never look back. You've already asked her out and she's blown you off. So you don't ask anymore. You move on with your life and you proceed as if she's part of your past. She ain't part of your future. She ain't part of your present. She's part of your past and that's it. She's out. He says, also, I know you tell men to not accept friendship. Now listen to what he's trying to to do here. But the only way I am going to be able to reattract her is to see her in person and flirt with her so I should pretend to be her friend and hang out with her and prove to her that I am no longer a needy man and have become a more alpha and confident man. Well, the reality is when a real alpha male would do is to say, hey, you know what? Give me a call if it doesn't work out with that other guy. I'm not interested in being friends with you, so I'm going to move on with my life. And you walk and you never look back and you start date. You continue to date other women and meet new women until you find somebody who is exactly what you're looking for. Agreeing to be friends, that's fucking groveling, dude. That's fucking pathetic and it's weak. Do not fucking do it. See, your attitude is I got to prove myself to her. This is approval seeking behavior. You're acting like a little boy who's seeking approval from his mommy. It's time to put your big boy pants on and act like a man and say, fuck this bullshit. I am fucking out of here. I am off like a fucking prom dress. I'm fucking gonzo. See you later. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for the memories. Adios. Hasta la vista, baby. You're out of there. Don't ever call. Don't ever contact this girl again. When she does call you or she does text you, if it's text, never send more than two to three texts back and forth max. And if she calls you on the phone, never talk for more than two to three minutes and always end your text exchange or your phone calls with the same message. Hey, it was really great hearing from you, but I got to run. Keep in touch. And if she ever brings up getting together, then you say, sure, I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together? And then make a date. But don't ever bring it up unless she brings it up. And every time she contacts you after that, be short, two to three texts max, two to three minutes max on the phone. Hey, great hearing from you. But I got to run. Keep in touch. That's all. You're going to always close with that and then you're going to leave. One of two things will happen. She'll either stop contacting you. Or she will bring up getting together or come right out and ask you out on a date. Because you've already gone out of your way, made dates and she's just blown you off. And the only reason she's doing that is because she knows she can get away with it. And she knows that you'll come groveling back on your hands and knees. Don't fucking bullshit yourself into thinking that being friends with this girl is the way back. Because all you'll end up doing is giving yourself a really bad case of blue balls and you'll completely take yourself out of the dating game. That's a bad way to go. I wouldn't do it. He says, I really do love this girl and I do not want to just throw in a towel but I desperately would love to know how you would continue to play this. Well, I've just told you but at the end of the day, 
She's with another guy and she's trying to keep you in backup position and she's blowing a bunch of sunshine up your ass trying to get you to be friends. So you're like the break glass in case of emergency type of dude. Fuck that shit. No way. You deserve better. You don't get what you deserve in life. You only get what you negotiate. So be a good negotiator. Remember, the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. So do that. Let's get into the third email. And this guy says, Hi, Coach. I work at a convenience store in a very small town and there's this very attractive woman who comes in regularly who has a lot in common with me and shares the same interests. However, she's 20 years older than me. I'm 24. She's 44. Cougar! Married and has five children. We would semi-flirt from time to time, but the real journey all began on Valentine's Day. She came into the store and it was only her and I. She asked me what I was up to later that night and mentioned that her Valentine was in town. What am I up to later? Well, you and I are going to be hanging out at my place. That's what we're going to be up to later. When are you free to get together, sweetheart? Really simple. That's all you would have had to say. Her vague clue went right over my head and I didn't realize what she was getting at until she had already left the store. Oh! Close but no cigar. And this is what women do. They hint. They talk around in circles. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to be the man, to be direct, decisive and create an opportunity for sex to happen. That's what a date is. But the bottom line, she's looking for a good time and she's a cheating wife. So if that's what you want, if you want to hook up and get a little cougarness and – have a little friends with benefits action, a little sex playmate. If you're not worried about some dude coming after you with a gun or coming and kicking your ass, then hey, by all means, proceed with with major caution. He continues on, after she was unintentionally denied, she began frequenting the store much more and I presume to see why I had denied her. I wasn't sure if I was interpreting things correctly, so I mentioned to her that she looked great on the next time she came in to try and gauge things. The very next day, she came into the store all dressed up. Heels, nails, sexy dress, jewelry, hair was done, makeup, the whole works. She was – women know that us guys are visual creatures and she was putting on her best attention-getting look. Obviously, you noticed. I was completely overwhelmed by her display of beauty and as we were talking, she winked at me. How obvious can she be? I didn't do anything because I was with my boss and she had her children with her. She gave me a lame excuse of why she was all dressed up but I knew it was for me, hopefully. She came in a few days later by herself and she needed a bag of feed. So I went out to the barn and loaded her bag of chicken feed. I was extremely nervous also. I was sweating profusely, my heart was pounding, and I had butterflies in my tummy. She's just a girl, dude. She's just another girl. Her farts stink. She gets bad breath. She has eye boogers in her eyes when she wakes up. Occasionally, she probably gets cave bats too. It's We're all human, dude. Don't put her on a pedestal and treat her like a fucking celebrity acting like you're not worthy. He says, as I load the feed into her vehicle, I told her, I don't want you coming to the store wearing that dress anymore. She looked confused and asked why. And he said, first off, you almost gave my boss a heart attack and I couldn't stop thinking about you the rest of the day. That's pretty charming, dude. She started to smile and I finished with, you know, you're not – and she finished with, you know, you're nothing but trouble. Get out of here in a joking way. And then she drove off. She came in days later to give me an advertisement to post on our store bulletin board and I noticed that it had been her phone number on it and it was circled several times as if to make sure I saw it. She claimed to need another bag of feed because she got the wrong type of feed the other day and when I went out to the barn, she followed me in there and I loaded the feed up once again and I handed her a piece of paper with my phone number on it and said, I know this is the only reason why you keep coming in here so much, which she denied but she seemed really happy. That was pretty slick. What I would have said is like, look, you obviously got a guy in your life. Here's my number. If your Valentine is ever out of town and you'd like to meet up for a drink sometime, give me a call. That's all you would have had to say. One week went by and she didn't call but she did come back into the store and her demeanor was much different. She acted really shy. She claimed to need more feed and it was my plan to take her into the barn, away from her kids and the onlookers, and kiss her. I summoned her into the barn but I just couldn't pull the trigger. I would have just said, you know what? 
I think you just need to get over it and kiss me. Your lips look a little dry, by the way. Let me help you out with that. What's she going to say? No, I can't. I was like, all right, well, you got my number. Give me a call if you want to meet up for a drink sometime. I think you're pretty amazing. As she drove off, I felt really disappointed in myself and depressed. Hey, you gave her your number and you gave her a pretty authentic compliment, which I thought was pretty good. Inch by inch, millimeter by millimeter. This is how you get better. Practice. And I'm sure she feels that I handle things weakly. She seems aware of my lack of experience and keeps giving me chances, but I fear this won't last much longer. I would appreciate your critique on this situation and advice on what to do next. Well, next time she comes in and you're hanging out with her and just say, you know, you've had my number for a couple weeks and you still haven't worked up the courage to give me a call. Or maybe your guy just has been in town all this time. Hey, I want you to know I think you're amazing and if you guys ever out of town and you want to get together for a drink, shoot me a text. I'd love to meet up with you. I got to run. I'll see you next time. And then don't ever bring it up again. That's, that's how I would handle it. Because that's all you can do. It's up to her to handle it from that point. Because she's, I mean, she's got a, a husband, dude, or a guy she lives with. You don't be calling her. It's like, fuck that. This way, if she reaches out to you, then you can make a definite date to get together, meet up for a drink, and then slowly escalate, just like I talk about in my book, things to a successful conclusion in your bedroom. Because you definitely, definitely don't want to go to her place. That would be a bad idea. So let's get into the fourth and final email. And this guy, I think I had a phone session with him a month or two ago, and I've done a few email, um, answered a few emails for email coaching he sent in to me. He says, hey, Corey, I got another message from the girl in question. She was asking me how I've been, and she's been thinking of me and asked me what's new. I told her I've been busy, and I'm away for two to three weeks from today for some meetings, and I asked what's new with her. She told me that she broke up with her long-distance relationship boyfriend two weeks ago. Huh. Imagine that. What a quinky dink. About the same time, she messaged me that she misses me two weeks ago. Huh. Another quinky dink. In other words, hey, I'm available. So I said, let's get together when I get back from my trip. And she said she'd love to catch up. I bet she would. I'm away until the 13th of June and I said, let's do something around the 14th of June. And she said she has a birthday party to go to that night. So I withdrew the offer. You've been paying attention. And said, why don't you just contact me a little closer to the 13th and let me know when you're free to catch up once I'm back. She said that would be great. And she's, but she's not 100% sure of her schedule two to three weeks out. And she doesn't want to mess me around. I said, perfect. I'll hear from you then. Have a great weekend. She wrote back, have a safe trip. Fucking, you paid attention, dude. Good job. You get the gold star today. You know what? Give yourself a cookie while you're at it. He says, I'm fighting not to text while I'm away. Don't you fucking dare, dude. You stated something to her. That was your purpose. That was your statement of who you are. You must be congruent with those words, dude. If you text her or call her, poof. You're blowing it. You're evaporating the sexual tension. That would be a major fuck up and I would be really disappointed as your coach if you did that. He says, I've chased before and have no interest in reaching out until she lets me know her schedule. Bingo. Good job. I worry that since I was not there to hang out when she contacted me and since she's single now that maybe I missed out. Hey, dude, you weren't in town. There's nothing you can do. You're fucking busy. Too fucking bad for her. I even thought about calling my work trip short. And he says, stupid, right? Like, yep, don't fucking do that, dude. Nothing comes in between a man and his purpose and mission in life. Don't ever fucking think about doing anything like that, ever. He says, I worry she will change her mind or meet some other guy in the meantime. She might, but so might you. You might meet a great hot lady where you're at. And she's going to be wondering about that, thinking about that. The ball is in her court. It's a tennis match. You hit the ball over the net. Now you got to wait for her to hit it back. You must be congruent with your words, dude, because when you don't, when you say one thing and then you do another, it's a bad way to go. And a lot of times women will purposely wait to see what you do. When you say you're going to wait and then you don't wait, you make yourself look like a weak bitch, dude. And I know you're a much better man than that. He says, on the other hand, I figure that she did me no favors when she was dumping me and going back and forth with this long-distance relationship boyfriend the last three months. Yep. 
Remember, no one would ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. Why invite her to fuck you around again? She's reaching out to you. She's chasing you. And guess what that means? When a woman's chasing you, she ain't getting rid of you. And that it's the least that she can do is wait two weeks. If she meets someone in the next two weeks, she probably wasn't that into me if she couldn't wait two weeks. Her loss, right? Yep. But at the end of the day, you have a lot of time in with this girl. So you have a much stronger emotional bond with her than any other fucking schmuck she's going to meet. And besides, there's a 97% chance that any other dude that she does meet doesn't know this stuff. So you're okay, dude. Chill. Practice infinite patience. If she hooks up or dates anyone in the in the meantime, we've been apart, it will bother me and I won't be able to see her as a potential girlfriend. We've already talked about that, dude. Is it okay to have that kind of standard? Just a fuck buddy now at this point. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. If she reaches out to you, create an opportunity for sex to happen. That's it. Who she's fucking is none of your business. Who you're fucking is none of her business. Yes, freedom is from the Lord and it is her life, but I know what I want. And I don't buy all that shit of downtime and seeing other people, but I accept their right. I just don't know what I want as a potential girlfriend. Well, at the end of the day, we've already had the discussion on the fact that what she did excludes her from being a girlfriend. She's just not it, dude. You can't make her into into the perfect woman that you want. The only thing you can do is make yourself available and create the circumstances in your life that will attract a woman who is exactly the kind of woman that you want. But you can still have a great time and hook up with her, hang out, have some fun. Let Always let her do 100% of the contacting in this particular case from this point forward. You never need to contact her again. She's already proven to you she will reach out to you. So let her. And when she does, assume she wants to see you and make a date. Remember, now that there's dead radio silence between the two of you, she's going to be thinking about you and she's going to be wondering about you. And if she's thinking about you, it has a positive effect on her attraction level. In other words, it makes it go up and that's what you want. Because when the attraction level goes up, she wants to be with you more and more. She wants to see you more and more and she wants to fuck you more and more. And that's what you're looking for. That's what you hired me for. He says, I can't hold it against her but I know that I don't like it. Well, you can complain to the big man upstairs. All I can do is teach you the way women are. If you don't like the way they are, talk to the big man upstairs because I didn't make women. As long as I don't get mad at her, it's my standards I need to live by, then I would only see her as a hookup. Now you're talking. He says, guy friends, how do you handle them? Secondly, well, all you can do is be her best option. You, The only thing you have control over is how you show up. And if you show up and you diligently apply the fundamentals that we talked about in our phone session and I talk about my book and my videos over and over and over and over and over and over again – you will be fine. She will respond accordingly. You can set your fucking watch to it, bro. He says, secondly, if her guy friends and her have a pass, would you let them hang out at all? It's none of your business. She's just a fuck buddy. Get over it, dude. Not an ex, but a guy friend she slept with once years ago. It doesn't matter. It's none of your fucking business. She ain't your girlfriend. She ain't your fucking wife. And she's not girlfriend or wife material. We've already had this discussion. I don't like it. Complaining to the big guy upstairs. Not my problem. Guy friends and I have to accept, I know, but I don't like guy friends since she's fucked once and hey, I have a right to my own standards, right? It's like, you know, we're beating this horse into fucking hamburger meat, dude. We went round and round about this subject on her phone session. You got to let that shit go, dude. It's not going to help you get what you want, which is to hook up with her again. Just think about when you're making love to her for the first time and all the months that it's been since you last hooked up with her and you're going to be laying there in bed and you're going to be thinking... Fucking A. Thanks, Corey Wayne. You fucking rock. I just see that as non-girlfriend material to me. Now you're talking. Do you mind if a girl you're dating is dating your guys at the same time and sleeping with them and you? Even if you're doing the same with other girls? I don't give a fuck. I've hooked up ex-girlfriends and my ex-wife with friends of mine that she slept with. It's like, it doesn't bother me. I don't, I'm not attached to that stuff. I just want my girls to be happy. I love the women that have been in my life. I want them to be happy and if I can contribute to that, fucking A, dude. The whole purpose of all relationships is you go there to give. If you're no longer with somebody, why wouldn't you want them to be happy? I've had girlfriends that I've been coaching and teaching how to hook up with other guys and they still come and visit me and we hook up. It's like 
I don't care either way. I'm getting my needs met. They're getting their needs met. We love each other. We support each other. I know that's a big stretch for some people, but it's like when you get to that place, dude, you'll have an. That's what you need to do. Is you need to get to a place where you're not attached. He says, "Could you see a girl doing this, becoming your girlfriend? I wouldn't be be an exclusive relationship with a woman who screwed around and lied to you and deceived you. I learned that lesson the hard way. Obviously, you still haven't learned it yet." He says, I could handle it if we were just fucking, but I couldn't see her as a girlfriend in the future do it. Like I said, dude, you know, I've, we've already kind of beat that to uh, that into hamburger meat. She's a fuck buddy. She's a sex playmate. She's a friends with benefits. That's it. Whoever she fucks, it's none of your business. Practice safe sex with her and keep looking for the ultimate girl. A woman who has a comes from good family, has good parents, she loves her mom and dad, she's got her shit together. That's what you want. Not not somebody that – she's just a great sex playmate. It is what it is, bro. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype or email coaching. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon.